we're going to get started and I want to thank all of you for coming today to show your respect to Mark and his family and uh, we want to just let you know that this is what Mark wanted this is what Mark had requested he wanted us to come in our tie-dye what he say don't dare show up, show up in right? a suit. don't dare show up in a suit and so we're going to make this a special day for Mark a celebration of life we're going to celebrate the life that mark now lives in jesus christ today and uh and it's going to be an awesome time and i just want to share real quick some memories that i had with mark and uh you know i mean mark mark was an outstanding guy uh, i cherished every minute that i had to talk to him he would often text me call me we were always talking and I love it because it would always start out with, I was thinking. Mark was constantly thinking. And he says, I have an idea. And he would tell me about some kind of outreach we could do in the church. Or he was asking me for the prayer list of anybody who's sick in the church. And uh, Mark truly was just an awesome guy. And he loved the Lord. He loved the Lord. And uh, today he wanted this time to be in the church he wanted it to be a celebration with singing and smiles today and uh and that's what we're going to do so at this time Aaron pastor hogue's got a song he's going to sing and uh then we'll just go right into the service so thank you for coming amen i'm so glad to be here with you all and to the family and friends that are here you guys have my deepest sympathy and I am Pastor Aaron Holt. I'm also a chaplain with Garden Angel Hospice. That's how I really got to meet Mark. Uh, new Sandy. Yeah. Uh, new Sandy. And, and uh, but got to meet Mark and spend some time with him. Well, we had some great conversations. And uh, my goodness, he was a man of faith. He was a man of hope. Boy, he had hope. He had hope that he was going to get out of that bed and walk again. And uh, boy, did his dream come true yes. just a few weeks ago, yes. a week or so ago. Amen. Yes. And uh, I was with him a couple of days. I'm going to share this just real quick. We'll sing this song. I was with him a couple of days before he passed. And uh, Sandy was with me in the room. And he was coming in out of consciousness. And uh, man, I'm telling you what, uh, I love to hear these stories. But he woke up and he said, he began to point at the ceiling. He said, you see that? And he began to point at different places. Look at that. And then he'd go back out. And, and then he woke up again at another time. And he said, did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. I said, Mark, what are you hearing? He said, did you hear that? And he went back out. My friend, he was going, I believe he was going in and out and ready to go into the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Right. And uh, if there's ever, uh, you know, we get into the presence of the Lord here, here on earth. And uh, like I was telling them last night, you know, we don't live in God's world here. Here in this life that we're living in, death is present, sin is present, bad things happen to good people. Um, it hurts us that Mark is gone. It does, it hurts us. You know, I'm going to miss him. I didn't get to spend as much time as you all have with him. I'm going to miss it. He's a great guy. And uh, I enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, the family, man, I can just only imagine what you're feeling. But uh, we can get into the presence of the Lord here. And when we get into the presence of the Lord here, we can find direction. We can find peace. And, and see, Mark knew that. We had conversations about that. You know, we talk about books because he was a reader. Yeah. He loved to read, read books. And, and a matter of fact, I gave him one book and then he gave me a book. <laughs> and uh, uh, I told him, I said, you're going to have to forgive me because I still haven't read all that book. <laughs> and so, and, uh, but I believe that he was longing to be in the presence of the Lord. Because my goodness, because he was starting to see some things and begin to hear some things and my goodness what a I would I, I would have loved if he would just elaborate just a little bit more that day of what he was seeing and what he was hearing and uh, so I'm going to sing this song 
We sung it a while back at the square and and uh, a song that I wrote uh, many years ago. But it talks about being in the presence of the Lord. And the reason why I wrote that song, I begin to think about Moses. He was uh, he had a choice that day. You see, he ran from God forty years. Uh, it took him forty years to get it to get him to Midian. And uh, when he was 80 years old, he looks over and he sees this burning bush. Well, it's nothing out of the ordinary to see a burning bush because you, you think, well, it's just going to burn up, right? Well, it didn't burn up. So he gets curious and he walks towards that burning bush and he had a choice that day. Do I step into the presence of the Lord or do I run away from it? And when he stepped into the presence of the Lord, that boy said, "Step, you know, take your shoes off. Step on holy ground. And Moses finally received the direction that he'd been looking for for 80 years. Finally received the direction of where he was supposed to do in life. And uh, you've got a plan and purpose for your life. You know, we all know Mark's story. We all know what his life was. But we know how what his life has been the past few years. How he has lived for God. Come on now. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Let's step into the presence of the Lord today. I lift my hands to you, Lord. I don't know what you see. If there's anything.
Well, thanks everyone for being here today. Um, <clears throat> my dad was a lot of things. If you do marketing in any capacity, Chase has already made you laugh. That's right. George Carlin. George Carlin. Hello? There we go. It's just me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. George Carlin, one of his favorite comedians, said, I think it's the duty of the comedian to find out where the line is drawn and cross it deliberately. <laughs> my dad was a master of crossing that line. <laughs> he always had a joke, a comment, something to say that was inappropriate and the most, and the most beautiful way. <clears throat> if you know me at all, you would know I inherited most of my father's so-called character flaws. <laughs> Him and I refer to it as honesty, but to each their own. <clears throat> I have his complete lack of filter, the assumption that I'm always right, and the ability not to be embarrassed by whatever comes out of my mouth. Which would explain why my mother is currently sitting there sweating and administers multiple prayers over my speech today. <laughs> Through my youth, my father and I didn't always get along. Most teenage sons and their dads don't. Something about neither of us enjoying arguing with ourselves. But through those disagreements came growth. He taught me to accept others for who they are, that I'm not always right, and that if I listen to people, I can actually learn. He and I loved to discuss politics. He was this weird mix of Abby Hoffman and Rush Limbaugh, a free-spirited, fight-the-power hippie conservative, which still makes zero sense to me. <laughs> but he challenged me. He challenged me not to stay stagnant in my beliefs, to be able to change, to be a free thinker, <clears throat> something that's greatly benefited me today. <clears throat> he gave me the gift of growing up in a firehouse. He gave me heroes. Those heroes were my second fathers growing up. <clears throat> Those are men of great character that helped me make me who I am today. I didn't realize it at the time, but being just like him is all I wanted to be. He showed me the power and love of the brotherhood, and for that I'll always be grateful. Now my father wasn't a perfect man, everyone in this room knows that, no one is. He made his mistakes, but he always owned them. He knew his faults and tried to overcome them. He taught me that a mistake is an opportunity to be better and not to waste those precious moments. My father gave me my passion, some of what you call an obsession with the outdoors. This mic is not my friend. <laughs> <laughs> my father gave me the passion, my obsession with the outdoors. He taught me to shoot, how to hunt and fish. He taught me how to respect nature, to be a conservationist, and to share that love with others. He was insanely proud of his grandchildren. <laughs> He often told me he wished he could have been a grandpa first. <laughs> My dad enjoyed craft beer and good whiskey. He often reminded me life's too short to drink cheap beer. I think my dad always knew his time on earth would be limited. Hair and men are good at two things, talking back and dying young. But he took full advantage of this time here. He lived a life of no regrets. He loved his family fiercely, especially my mother. <clears throat> she had this way of turning his hard ass side into sappy mush. I've never seen a man love a woman so much. <clears throat> so I'll end with a quote from my favorite writer, Hunter S. Thompson. Life should not be a journey to the grave with the intention of arriving in a pretty and well-preserved body, but better to skid in broadside in a cloud of smoke, thoroughly used up, totally worn out, and loudly proclaiming, wow, what a ride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, live a, bit of, live a little bit of your life like my father. Buy the ticket, take the ride. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
uh, he always described a certain list of rules in life that they weren't always spoken. They weren't always spoken, but he expressed them through his actions. So I figured I'd give you the the five rules of life according to Mark Aaron. Number one, life's too short to listen to crappy music. Um, some of the earliest memories of my dad and my mom was dancing all over the living room to some of the songs you guys heard earlier today, um, but especially Blue Sky from the Allman Brothers and Crocodile Rock from Elton John. But no matter what the activity was, there was always music in the background, and many of those songs just turned into the soundtracks of a lot of great memories. Rule number two, life's too short for crappy food. Anyone that was around my dad soon realized that he was a foodie, and he loved to feed his family. Um, one of his favorite things to do is sit outside by the smoker and uh, just prepare a giant feast that he honestly would hardly eat. He just liked to sit back and watch everybody. Um, but it was just one of his favorite things to do. Uh, pancakes on Saturday mornings always turned into a special event with the kids, the grandkids. And, um, you know, now I, I can't make pancakes in my own house without my kids tell me that I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> I don't do it like how long. So, but food was always a way to feed his family, but for my dad it was an opportunity to make memories that none of us will ever forget. Rule number three, the outdoors are sacred, treat them as such. Some of my favorite memories with my dad was hunting and fishing with him and my brother. He always taught us, don't take more than you can use, and if you're going to take the shot, it better be a quick one. And whatever you do, Ryan, keep your rod tip up. <laughs> my dad, it was always more than just a fishy catch or the game you kill. That's why they don't call it catching, or that's why they don't call it hunting, he would often, or that's why they don't call it killing, he would often say. But he'd always follow it up with, aren't you glad you went? For him, it was more about spending time with me and Ryan away from the distractions of the world that meant more to him than anything. Rule number four, you're going to mess up in life, own it. Uh, my dad, like all of us, was far from perfect. He'd often admit that to us. It's how you come back from your mistakes that make you who you are. There was one time at a basketball game I'll never forget. I, uh, man, I was, I was a mess that game and did some things where I let my team down and the coach pulled me and I was sitting down at the end of the bench and I was really sulking in myself. And all of a sudden I felt a, somebody's hand on my chin just yank my head around. I thought I was gonna break my neck. There was my dad and his finger was in my chest. And I'll never forget what he said. He looked at me dead in the eye and said, how you choose to come back from this is going to tell me about what kind of man you're going to be. And that always stuck with me. And I can still, every time I tell that story, I can still feel his finger poking into my chest too. Rule number five, always love with everything that you have. In every aspect of Mark Aaron's life, love for his family is what drove him. We often joke about my dad being a hard ass, and he was. But it was because he loved all of us with every ounce of his being. He wanted us to be better than him. And he wanted us to come out on top of life. But he still had a soft side too. Like Ryan said with my mom, I remember a trip to Tennessee with Christina when we were first dating. And seeing those two walking up ahead of us in Dollywood, holding hands and holding on to each other, laughing like high school kids. And seeing him randomly grab my mom and dance wherever they were at at the song. Um, Wonderful Tonight from Eric Clapton came on. That was their song. And it didn't matter where they were at, she was slow dancing with them when that came on. And just the way his grandkids melted his heart. No matter what, he loved his family with everything that he had. So these past couple years were hard on all of us. It was hard to sit by and watch my dad, the man I always compared to Superman, deteriorate physically. But it was the way he faced his battle spiritually and emotionally that made me realize just how tough he actually was. He never complained to us. If you ever asked how he was, he was always just peachy. And if you ever put too much focus on his pain, he'd often quick, quickly cut you off and ask about the grandkids. Because of him, Ryan and I have turned into the men that we are today. Dad, you shaped my life like in ways you could never imagine. I plan on carrying these five rules with me wherever I go. I love you. I can't wait to see you again.
Mark wanted celebration, and he wanted praise and worship. And so that's what we're going to do now. So if you guys want to stand up with this.
I, I mean, I can testify to what Aaron said, and I can testify to what Micah said, that everything's just peachy. Mark, you would walk into that house, a guy that is in pain. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is in excruciating pain. And you know what? He was in such joy in the pain. I'm talking about a Savior today that you can be in pain. You can be in trial. You can be in trouble. You can be going through hell. But he said, when I show up in the scene, he said, I'll make it all better. He'll pull you right through it. Mark knew he had a peace inside of him. The Bible says that your spirit bears witness with the Holy Spirit that you are a child of God. And Mark had that. His spirit was bearing witness with the Lord's spirit that he is saved. And Mark knew where his destination was. And Mark was ready to step on over to the other side. And just like he did when Pastor Hope was there and say, don't you see it? I believe he was seeing the pearly gates. I believe he was seeing the streets of gold. I believe he was seeing the walls and, and the gates of, of pearl. And I, I believe that he was hearing the heavenly choir already singing and, and I believe he was being ushered into that throne room and I got news for you whether or not you want to go to the throne room you're going to find yourself there today or one one day you're going to find yourself there whether you want to go or not you may say this is hogwash I don't want to believe it but I'm going to tell you something you're going to be in the throne room one day and you're going to give an account for everything that you have done, everything that you have said. There's a book of remembrance in heaven that remembers every cry, every prayer, everything that you've done. There's a book of works that remembers every work that you've done. There's a book of life that your name must be recorded in to make heaven your home. There's the book of the living in heaven. And in the book of the living, it has your birth date. It has your exit departure date. It knows exactly how you're going to go out. It knows exactly the day and the hour that you're going to take your next breath. And my friends, there's no beach that you're going to be set back drinking a Corona at when you die. You can dream on. You can put it in your head. You can fill yourself with false hope, counterfeit hope. And if that's what does it for you, then my friend, you're going to be disappointed because there is no beach. There is no in between. There's either life or death. There's either heaven or hell. And you can set back today and you can deny it. You can set back in your pride and you can find yourself unto that sea unto like crystal glass standing before the throne of God where the Father sits and where the Lamb that was slain for you in this moment saying, my grace is sufficient for you and I love you and I desire to have a relationship with you. Mark desired today that every person that is a sinner today would turn their heart to Jesus Christ because he knew he, had, he experienced this new life. He experienced this new hope. What a friend he had in Jesus. In his worst moments, he had a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. In his worst moment, he had a God that said, I love you, I'm proud of you. Come on. He had a God that took the shame, took the regret, took the wrongdoing, and he washed it away. The Bible said that when you get saved, when you have this encounter with Jesus and he washes you, he cast your sin, he cast that old man as far as the east is from the west and he puts it into the sea of forgetfulness he throws out all the books that you did wrong and he puts you in one book called the book of life and he says you're covered by my grace yes. and when you take that last breath and you're going to one day don't think you're not come on are we all in agreement today that there's a day for us you see this earth that we live in is Satan's dominion. Satan is the prince of the air. He's the king of this world. He's in rule. He's reigning. He's influencing governments. He's influencing nations and world leaders. He's, in, he's influencing people today. But God said, I got my kingdom and one day, his purpose is this, that he's going to overthrow all rebellion and rejection and all sin. And he said, my kingdom's going to touch earth. 
And I'm going to make this the final heaven. I've got a new Jerusalem coming down from the sky. And it's going to take the place of the old Jerusalem. And nothing that defileth can enter it. Not, no abominations can enter it. No dark thing can enter it. I'm talking a city in which no darkness is going to be in. That it's going to be like 24-7. No darkness at all. Where we can spend all eternity with Him. He said that He did not appoint any man to wrath but that all would come to salvation through His Son. Jesus died on a cross. He put Himself on a cross. Did not have to. Could have called on a host of angels to deliver Him out of it. But he put himself on the cross because he said, I'm going to find some messed up people in the future. I'm going to find some broken people in the future. I'm going to find people that are in sin and people that have a messed up life. And I'm going to come to them if they will will to accept me. I'll come to them and I'll take it all away. How many of you love the sound of that? That everything that you've done wrong can literally be gone. Man may see you from it, but God don't see you for it. God said, I see you covered. Today, I'm talking about a transfer, an exchange. You can exchange your sin for righteousness. I want to ask this for a minute, and I think Pastor Hope's going to say something. All right, he said, you go right ahead. I must be doing a good job. <laughs> Mark's proud right now. Mark's proud right now. And I don't want you to do it for me. I don't even want you to do it for Mark. I want you to do it because you're ready for a change today. I want you to do it for yourself. How many of you are saying, I want a change in my life? Yes. Come on. I, I want this God that is so good. Did you know that God will only be as big as you make Him? If you don't pray to Him, if you don't believe on Him, if you don't read the Word and meditate on Him, if you don't call upon His name, He's not going to be a very big God to you. Because He's not going to force Himself on you. He wants your free will. You see, when He made us, He could have programmed you just to worship Him and love Him. But He said, I want, you to, I want your free will to worship Me. I want to see your will. Will you will to serve Me? And today I believe that the Holy Spirit's tugging on some hearts today. And I'm praying that you don't set back in your pride, that you don't leave this room without knowing Jesus Christ. Think about your day, just like Mark's day today. Think about your day. What are they going to say about you? I'm very proud to honor Mark today and say that he's in heaven. There is no question in my mind that he is in heaven. Yes, Mark used to do things that were wrong just like I did. Yes, Mark used to live in sin just like I did. But the new Mark, Sandy, that I knew, he had walked away from all of that and given his heart to Jesus. Yes. And today he's saying, would you just walk away from it? Would you just separate yourself from the sin? Come to me and let me fill you with good things. You see, we think that we don't want to... Let, let me put it this way. We think uh, that we're such big men and women and that we, we're adults and we can live our life however we want and we don't need a man or a book telling us how to live. And we think that's freedom. But I'm telling you, when I used to be in sin, I used to think that was freedom. My dad was a pastor and I was in rebellion towards it. I was living however I wanted. I didn't even want to hear no mention of Jesus. And I thought I was living in freedom until I found Jesus. And then I found out that's true freedom because sin is bonded. You're letting somebody oppress you. You're letting somebody keep you back from blessings. He said he'll give you life and life more abundantly. The enemy comes to kill, steal and destroy. He's trying to get all of you to set back today in your pride and your arrogance and your sin and not accept Jesus because he wants to bring death to you. But if you know Jesus, there's no death. Mark did not die. It was a transfer into heaven. Uh -huh. His soul and his spirit is alive and well in heaven today. And one day that body is going to be met back up with him and made a glorified body. So I want to ask you today, everybody, to stand with me.
And we're going to go into two songs if you guys want to get it going like Mark requested. His two favorite songs, right? Two of his favorite Christian songs. We're going to sing them today. And I want you to... I want you to take an exam of your life right now. I want you to think upon your life right now. Do you know Jesus Christ? It's a simple answer. Do you know Jesus Christ today? Let me put it this way. How many of you love Mark? Do you want to see him again? Because Mark didn't take the way of rejection and he's not in hell, he's in heaven. And I'm going to see him again one day. Because I'm determined that I'm going to live every breath that I have for Jesus Christ. I'm going to honor him in all that I can. And sure, I mess up. Sure, sometimes I fall short. But his grace is there to pick me back up when I call upon his name. Yes. The Bible said that the Lord is nigh to those that call upon him. That those that call upon him in truth. And that he will fulfill the desires of them. He will hear their cry and He will save them. Today, I would like you just to begin to cry out to God today as we sing this song. And if you want salvation, I'm asking you right now to put your hand up and we're going to pray for you. If you're saying, I want this Savior that Mark knew. I want this peace on my... Come on, how many of you say, I want a peace on my deathbed just like Mark had. Come on, I want a peace that is greater than the pain, greater than the sickness. I want the fear of death to go away. I want Jesus Christ in my life today. If that's you, I want your hand up. Stop setting back. This is what Mark wanted. This is what you... Hey, you want to honor the King, honor Mark? Give your, give your heart to Jesus today. We're going to sing this song. We're going to sing this song and I want you to reflect on it right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I can say.
here today, how many of you are ready to rise? You're saying, I'm ready to rise out of my sin. I'm ready to arise. I'm ready to have the confidence. I'm ready to have the relationship that God is with me. Come on, how, is there anybody here today that says, you know what? I, I, I want to know Jesus Christ. I want to know Him. I can tell you something. It's the best thing that you'll ever experience. I'm going to put it like this because I think Mark would have me say it like this. I've experienced drugs. I've experienced alcohol. I've experienced worldly things. I've experienced the pride of life, the lust of the flesh. I've experienced the world. Oh, and I thought it was fun, but when I found Jesus, I experienced everything that I had need of. And what a difference He made in my life. What a peace that He has given me, a joy that He's given me on my worst day. I can wake up and I can take it. Come on. And when, when I start to grow anxious and anxiety tries to overtake me, I know that He is with me and he's pulling me through it he truly loves you stop running from him why don't you just try why don't you just try it why don't you just partake of him and say Lord if you're real and Jesus if you really died on a cross for me Lord then I want to know I want to feel you and when you begin to say that I promise you something will come upon you his presence will be with you. The Bible said this, that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I don't know about you, but I need freedom. And especially on my dying bed, I need freedom. Today, we're going to sing this last song. These altars are open, or you can do it right from your seat. But you need to hear what I've said today. This is what Mark wanted. This is what the Lord wants. You see, when you become a child of God and you receive of God, you just want all to have that same thing. It's that good. It's that good. Hallelujah.
that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you begin to call upon Him and we're going to pray, and if you pray along with me in this prayer, even He even knows your thoughts. And if you pray this prayer right now and mean it with all your heart, then you have a promise that you are a child of God and you can leave out of this place knowing without any confusion at all, you can know that you are a child of God and that when you take your last breath, that there was a ransom for you that took your sin and He covered you and He said, Welcome in, thy good and faithful. Pray after me today, Heavenly Father. We believe in your Son. We believe, God, that you raised him on the third day. We believe that he's sitting on the right hand of your throne now, making intercession for us now. Lord, we know when we call upon your name that you're no respecter of person. You're not worried about our past. You won't turn us away, but you'll welcome us all in. And Lord, right now we come to you. And Lord, we ask that you would forgive us of our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Lord, that you would be so present in our life. Lord, that our ears would hear you. Lord, that our hearts would hold you. And Lord, that your spirit would be so strong on us. Lord, we're asking for a new start. We're asking that the old man die and the new will be raised. Lord, we thank you for your promise. We thank you for your blood. We thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for the joy. And Lord, we thank you for the strength. When we are weak, you are strong. Now, Lord, I pray, God, over each person today, God, that they would leave this place not in sorrow. Lord, but during this grievance process, Lord, that they would be reminded that they have a personal invite that this is not a goodbye, but this is a see you later. Right. If we know Jesus, we will see Mark again. Right. We will see you and we will be in your kingdom forever and ever. And Lord, I'm asking right now, God, that the Holy Spirit would be upon each person today, that you would comfort them and that your peace would you give unto them the peace that the world does not give, but the peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, let your joy be upon them. And Lord, I pray, God, Lord, that you would hear their cry in these days to come. And Lord, that you would, Lord, that you would come down. And God, that you would minister unto them. Lord, that not one person would leave this place without filling you today. God, that you would go with all. Lord, that you would prick their heart. Lord, that you would stir within their spirit. And Lord, that you would speak into their ears. Lord, I'm praying, God, protection, blessings, Lord, healing and salvation over these people today. In Jesus name, everybody says, Amen. 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 All right. That concludes our service today. And can we just give a clap offering to the Lord today? I want you to just see the family, pay your last respects to them, and then we're done. And I want to thank you all for coming. I've been blessed today. This has been an awesome time. I think this went exactly how Mark would have it. Exactly. And I love it. I love it. And I am so happy that I knew Mark, that I knew him. And what a friend and what a legacy, what a legacy that lives on. We will, none of us will ever forget Mark.
And His words will always be in us. I mean, he, listen, I've got a book full of stuff i got to do that Mark gave me. And I don't know in my lifetime if I can get it done. I mean, Mark may get it done in a week. But in my lifetime, I don't know if I can get it done. So, I want to thank you all for coming. God bless you. Thank you.